seven professional firefighters, real American heroes who are ready to help you at home. Your children know them as Tiller and Friends, and you can count them among your friends too. These men risk their lives every day and have seen enough suffering. They want to stop accidents before they happen. These firefighters are a dedicated group. They have found an easy way to help you, help your children, and protect your home. Watch for a while. You'll see what I mean. Now you be a good little boy. I'm going to be right over here making lunch. Better Entertainment has produced this videotape just for you. It's about protecting your home and family. With the help of these dedicated firefighters, you'll enjoy discovering how easy and inexpensive it can be to prevent accidents in your home. This is the first in a series of video programs developed to help you recognize and prevent potential disasters. Three real-life firefighters are going to make some simple suggestions that can help you at home. Our firefighters will go through each room to identify dangerous situations and offer some easy solutions. Included with this tape is a safety checklist and escape planner to help you. So follow along with the program and use the checklist to organize information for your home. Our program starts in the living room and will cover fireplace safety, matches and cigarette lighters, the strike zone, electrical wall outlets, ashtrays and liquor storage. Let's see what our firefighters have to say. Now this is the kind of screen that you need on your fireplace to keep the sparks off of the floor and carpet. This thing could stop Santa Claus. Looks like they just had it clean recently too. All right. Now these are matches. They're dangerous especially if you have little children around the house. They need to be kept up out, out of the, the strike, strike zone. zone. The strike zone is just an area that your tallest child can reach. Larry, we better take a look at that outlet right there. Oh boy. This outlet has too many cores and is definitely overloaded. It could cause problems. And if you are experiencing any difficulties like blinking lights, blown fuses, or trip breakers, you need to talk to a professional. You should also keep cigarette lighters up out of the strike zone. If you have smokers in the house, make sure you have plenty of ashtrays available. And if you have a large gathering of people, after they leave, check under the cushions and make sure there's no smoldering ashes, just to be sure. Have you seen Justin? Where'd you get the cookies? Hey, guys, hmm? did you notice all these open bottles of liquor right here? Those should definitely be put away in a safe spot. Did you know that it only takes two teaspoons of 80 proof liquor to legally intoxicate a 30 pound child? Uh, guys, the checklist? Checklist. Check. List. Mm -hmm. So when you check your living room, make sure the fireplace is clean and has a sturdy screen. Matches and lighters are out of the strike zone. Remember, the strike zone refers to any area a child can easily reach. Never overload an electrical outlet with too many cords. Check under cushions and pillows after a party for smoldering cigarette ashes. And keep liquor bottles out of the strike zone. Next, we'll be in the kitchen. Oh, look at this kitchen. Mm. Mm -hmm. Wow, look at this stove. Just like the one at the station. <laughs> You're right. Only one difference is, this is cleaner. All right. <laughs> Boy, and this food smells really good, doesn't it? You know, pots and pans left on an unattended stove with the handles out like this can really be dangerous. 
small child can come by here and pull this hot sauce right on their heads. I better check that sauce. Uh, cords like this are real tempting to the little guys. And scalds and burns are mostly caused from hot liquids. Mm. That's a good point, Larry. Anytime you have a minor burn, all you need to do is cool it down with cool water. You don't need ice or butter, just cool water. And look at this stove, nice and grease-free. Hood looks good. How's the extinguisher? The extinguisher is good. They have a UL listed, and it's charged and ready to go. Should you happen to need one of these in an emergency, all you need to remember is the acronym PASS. It stands for pull the pin, aim at the base of the flames, squeeze the trigger, and sweep from side to side in a gentle fashion. Whoa, look at this. Sharp. Mm. Anytime you have sharp and dangerous utensils like that, they need to be kept up out oh, of the strike, strike zone. zone. Take a moment and look around your kitchen. You can never be too careful. Is your stove safe? Are handles on hot pots and pans out of reach of children? Remember, always use cool water for burns. Keep the stove and exhaust hood grease-free. Have a fire extinguisher handy and in good condition. Remember, PASS. It stands for pull the pin, aim at the base of the flames, squeeze the trigger, sweep from side to side. An especially dangerous area for children in the kitchen is under the sink. You know, the place where all those new and improved magic cleaning liquids and solvents are kept. Aha, hello. Yeah, just like I thought. This is where most people store their common household chemicals, right here underneath the sink. You got stuff like cleansers and detergents. Oh, you have pesticides and oven cleaners. Some things that can really pose a problem. It's good, though, that you have them all in their, in their original containers, because if you have any safety problems, all the safety information is right on the back of these containers. So remember, you never store these chemicals where you're going to store your food and really all you need to do to make this cupboard safe is to install some child safety latches here so the little guys can't get in here because you know if a kid ever got in this cupboard that could really pose a <laughs> problem maybe we better check the emergency numbers good idea okay we've got fire police hospital doctor we even have grandmas and work phone numbers. All right. You know, those are all really important numbers to have, even for babysitters and guests. In an emergency, you don't want to waste time. I don't say anything on mousetrap removal, though. No. <whistles> With this pet door, just like your dogs and cats, a small child can get out, just like that. And once outside, well, they could fall into a pool, come in contact with some lawn chemicals, or eat a poisonous plant. Well, we've covered most of the areas downstairs now, and in a minute we'll rejoin our firefighters for a tour of the upstairs bedrooms and bathroom. First, let's review the previous section. We began with all those household items under the sink. Always keep household chemicals in their original containers. Original containers will have first aid instructions in case of an accident. Never store chemicals and food together. Install child safety locks on cabinets containing dangerous items. Keep a list of emergency phone numbers close to the phone. Check your pet door. Make sure a child can't get out and into trouble. Well, I think the boys are heading upstairs now. Let's join them. The laundry room, great. Oh. Here's the accident waiting to happen. Though. Uh, hey, smoke detector, it's safe to work. All right, perfect. Great room. Yeah. Well, everything here looks pretty good. You know, in case of a fire, though, it's good to remember that you need two ways out in every room. For this bedroom, this window would be great. You can see here that you have a portable fire escape ladder, and that's super. Another good thing that you might remember, in your bedrooms, in case of emergency, a flashlight could really come in handy. They've got one right over here by the bed, right where it's supposed to be. Oh, great. Take a look at this. You've got a gun in here. It's good to see that you have a safety lock on it, though. Ideally, guns and bullets should be stored separately, out of the strike zone, and in a place that you can lock for ultimate safety. You know that most firearm accidents are caused by children playing with guns? That's good information. Well, 
Larry's checking out the bathroom. Josh and I will check out that last bedroom. Sounds good. Captain Nielsen made a good point as he was coming up the stairs. Clutter, especially in hallways and on staircases, can easily cause an accident. Regularly check your smoke detectors. Plan two ways out of every bedroom. Have a portable escape ladder if necessary. Keep a flashlight handy. Put it next to your bed. Keep bullets and guns separated. Use a safety lock on guns and keep them out of the strike zone. You can never be too careful with guns. Remember, most gun accidents in America are caused by children playing with them. Captain Nielsen is in the upstairs bedroom, ready to give some important tips. Oh, hi, how's everything going? Well, let me share something with you in this room. The bathroom is probably one of the most dangerous places in the house. And the leader of the pack is this guy right here, the medicine cabinet. It contains everything from over-the-counter drugs, prescription drugs, even things like those uh, cough syrups and well, what else we got in here. But most of all, these guys. They look like candy to children. Sometimes they're outdated, sometimes they're old, and people don't dispose of them. And the caps always keep the child-proof caps on, because the children, these are very tempting. Down in here, we have a nightmare. These things here are real nice to help you out in the morning, but electrical appliance of all types should be unplugged and put away first thing after you finish with them. And razor blades, we know what those can do to little hands especially. And all these things up here look like toys to little kids. As far as down under the cabinets, it might be a good idea to have child-proof locks on those also if you have cleaners for anything up in here. Now over here in the toilet, this here is simple. Just keep the lid down because children love to play in water. Now the bathtub. It can also be one of the most dangerous places in the bathroom, especially when you have water dripping like this. It accumulates in the bottom and it only takes one inch of water for a child to drown in a bathtub. Once a week, a child drowns in a bathtub or a bucket. So you should always make sure the water does not build up Toys are removed so they're not tempting a little later on. And also, if your phone or your doorbell rings, finish the job up here or take those little guys with you. Just one thing, it only takes a few seconds for a child to drown. They always require constant supervision. Let's review how to make sure your children won't hurt themselves in the bathroom. Make your medicine cabinet safe. Throw out old, outdated prescriptions. Keep child-proof caps on all bottles. Unplug and put away each electrical appliance after you've used it. Never leave a razor or razor blades out on the counter. Install child-proof locks on every cabinet door. Always keep the lid down on the toilet. Remember, once a week a child drowns in the tub, so always make sure the drain is kept open in the bathtub. Keep toys out of the tub. Never, for any reason, leave a child unattended in the bathroom, especially in the bathtub. Our three firefighters are about to finish up with the last bedroom. Hey guys, we're all finished up in there. How about it? Hey, we're just finishing up this bedroom. Good. Okay. I notice that you've got a space heater here in this table, and although it is UL listed, this isn't a very good place for it. We've got combustibles that are too close. You'd be surprised the number of contact burns and fires that these start every year. We recommend that you keep it on the floor three feet away from anything else. And this smoke detector here is great. It's you all listed. Hey, and the battery works too. What a great addition for any kid's bedroom. Last year, however, over 5,000 people perished in residential fires. And it's estimated that 80% of those people would have been saved by a simple smoke detector like this. Just remember that you need to keep the ports clean, you need to check the batteries once a month, and give it a new battery on your birthday. And you know what I noticed, guys? Congratulations. Right. I noticed that she has child-proof caps in her electrical outlets all the way through the house. This is the one item that can stop children from putting items in here and getting a shock or an electrocution. Anything else we have? That's it for my list. Let's take a look at what we learned in this last bedroom. Keep electric heaters on the floor and three feet away from combustible materials. Have UL listed smoke detectors in each room. Check smoke detector batteries once a month and clean the ports. Change smoke detector batteries once a year. Install childproof caps on all the electrical outlets in the house. 
home safety. Protecting your children and family from accidents can be a reality. Make sure all your exterior doors have peepholes. Design an emergency escape plan and practice it. Have a meeting place for your family. Most importantly, practice all the skills we've discussed in this program. With some help from professional firefighters who care, and a few moments of your time, it's easy to have a safer home. I guess by now you can tell we're not actors. We're professional firefighters and educators. We're doing the best we can to get the message out and save lives. That's why we're making these tapes and developing a series of life-saving programs for you and your whole family. I wish I could come out and talk to everyone in person, but it's not possible. So please, look for upcoming programs, help me out, and give your family a fighting chance. Thanks for watching. The producers of this show have developed a complete series of programs to help your children and your entire family live safe and healthy lives. Together we can make a difference. Call the numbers information about upcoming programs. And I don't think it's ever too early to learn all of these kinds of safety things. And, and kids soak up more than people give them credit for, for soaking up. You know, people don't realize that kids learn at a very, very young age. And I think it will be very beneficial for children to be able to see this and, and to put it into their regular life skills. If you would come into my classroom and talk to my students, they could tell you what Tiller has taught them. And when we pick and choose it as an educator, we try to decide what program is effective. If it affects the life of one child, then the program has worked and it is effective. We really are teaching through Tiller, through the Tiller program, really are teaching skills that have the potential of saving children's lives. <laughs>